yeah uh, good evening everybody at the outset i thank uh, trichy euro education foundation uh, particularly vikram kartikeyan and uh, govind rajan and all team because i visited uh, a, a few weeks back to trichy and three things i learned are one is supine pcnl they are doing so is ecirs and second thing they are doing lot of rirs under spinal anesthesia and third thing is uh, uh they they use uh, no irrigation and uh, fourth thing very important is uh, practicing together uh, happily relaxing in the weekends uh, those who are practicing they are practicing others are relaxing these three four points i learned thank you very much for giving this opportunity uh, dear uh, viewers i am using a different system here i am using my cell phone only for showing the presentation as well as the videos because if you use the cell phone videos can uh, come without interruption so with this uh, rajender please come and focus the on back of me he will project the screen i will take 10 to 12 minutes i am the last speaker uh, definitely i will not have time bound but i, I will i will try to restrict now introduction my, my topic is pediatric stone disease as you all know rirs was uh, uh, 10 years now 12 years 15 years it is in practice slowly after doing 3000 4000 cases we started using uh, uh, pediatric cases uh, basically you have to see that uh, small penis small urethra is the consideration why because uh, if you do in a 12 years uh, uh, or uh, if you do in 12 years or 14 years boy or girl it is the same all you have to think is one year two years babies can we do it or not that is my focus of the Uh, talk and at the same time less than 20 kg or less than 5 years all the cases which are showing are of that age uh, naturally metabolic workup is the only thing it is a theory this slide you keep on your table after the surgery after the stent removal you do this you cannot mug it up and this is again theory you remember that in children potassium citrate is more commonly long term used number 2 allopurinol also we are using number 3 very important point is uh, we are using hydrochlorothiazide also what the theory we read it is more useful in children now coming to the uh, detailed uh, analysis depending on the analysis you choose these three potassium citrate allopurinol and thiazide this is theory technical aspect most important is can you insert the sheath in a one year boy usually answer is no because you will damage the urethra but if it is accommodable if you put one small feeding tube before the day smaller access sheath can be easily inserted larger access sheath also can be inserted but the major point is ureter behaves better than urethra in children ureter behaves better than urethra in children so urethra is a major consideration so ureter is uh, not a problem post tented ureters are very very good now double guide wires general anesthesia you can't use spinal anesthesia like vikram's crazy point because in children less than 5 years spinal is contraindicated pediatrician pediatric anesthetist nephrologist pediatric ventilator essential this is a normal caliber of urethra urethra won't become one french in one year child it is also eight french don't forget that it does not become one french in adults it may be 14 18 french but it is still eight french in children if you put small dilator in the submeatal region you can nicely you can nicely pass the access sheath bladder volume standard when you do mcug you calculate this remember that within 5 minutes bladder will fill not even 5 minutes if you don't use access sheath so you have to empty the bladder how will you empty the bladder you put a supra pubic intra cath and aspirate i will show that normal caliber of the ureter see it is a seven uh, intravesical length is 7 mm in a small child that means small length everything is small the moment you enter you will enter bladder the moment you enter into the ureter you will be into the pelvis so you have to be careful you can't be rough small small sheath is important lot of people do not use access sheath no ureteral dilatation only stenting pressures in children raise rapidly and intra calicial perforation is more common and uh, if you use access sheath pressures will be low no doubt about it 
so complication is because of the small ureter ureteric perforation structure is more common than adults nearly 1% these are not commonly seen ureteric injury then we have done around 57 children less than uh, around uh, uh, 5 years and we are operating time is around 1 hour and stone free rate is 80% only and fever is seen in 12 and relook is done in majority of the patients after relook uh, it is good the problem is you have to put a stent you have to go inside you have to do relook you have to do stent removal painful but the truth you have to accept the truth you can't escape ESWL is the first choice if you don't have ESWL of that child fitting into the uh, line then only you should go for RIRS or PCNL somebody who is good in puncture they can go for PCNL somebody who is good in ESWL they're fair enough but we are good in RIRS so we are doing it this is the way you aspirate the bladder while doing the procedure a respiratory parameters anesthetist challenge you can't say that stop respiration you can't say that give respiration you can't say that slow respiration it is all difficult ventilator is the most important you have to buy a ventilator where pressure volume related ventilator should be there so respiratory rate cannot be go below 20 tidal volume should be 8 to 10 pediatric rirs outcomes if you see 76 percent is the lowest 100 percent is highest a lot of people are doing before we do we should not think that we are the first person doing sepsis you see the first slide less than one year baby if the tlc is uh, hypoth if the tlc is more than 19000 it is abnormal today you do surgery suddenly 18000 you should not think sepsis their normal tlc is raised this slide is very very important how to assess the sepsis now this is how to uh, when in emergency how to uh, resuscitate the child without all this if you just insert the scope uh, if you spend one hour and suddenly patient something happens no use now coming to the guidelines same no difference adult child they are including now flurs uh, absolutely they are indicated now with this i will show three four videos where this is the one year old female baby female is easy see i am dilating this is not the direct dilator it is edited video once you dilate this is the advantage you use always rigid ureteroscopy pass two guide wires over the one guide wire you thread the uh, sheath once you are inside whether it is adult or child your movements as told by uh, Vikram your method of laser as told by Vinit Gohar your uh, um, accessories as told by um, Tanuj Bal Bhatia and the principles as told by Deepak are all same nothing uh, inside your movements only problem is if you don't have access sheath movements will be restricted especially you don't have nothing to hold like pen is long pen is stretch will not be there in female anyway anything will not be there and if you rotate at the pubic symphysis it may not rotate if you cannot rotate you cannot do the stone so ultimately you will fail this is a one year male baby bilateral rirs this is a why we have done bilateral on the first left side we have done it went easily see here i am going with ureteroscope access sheet this is a stand after the stent removal we are trying to pass the access sheath see here i am passing over the access sheath and i am inside once inside nothing see this is a laser initially i have used a normal flexible scope after that other side when i was doing i used a digital scope see here i have used access sheath one year baby because i came to know that the urethra is accommodable after that i used a digital scope see Digital scope also can be used in one year male baby. This bilateral RIRS we have presented in the World Congress of Endourology and uh, because it is stented, all this accommodative, see the vision, no bleeding, unless the continuous water aspiration from the bladder is essential. This is a five year old uh, female baby where both uh, homium and thulium, because it is large stone, how can you do a large stone in a small child, ureter and urethra male? So you have to do fast. See, this is a small external genitalia. You are pushing, putting a road runner. After that, you pass an access sheet because it is post stented. Then, see, flex C is going. This is 12 by 14 access sheet. Nice calcium oxalate monohydrate stone. Initially, you use the uh, homium laser with high frequency, high energy because stone will not get fragmented. We do only dusting, even pop dusting, as was told by Vinit Gohar. We do in the last. First only dust because from first only if you do pop dusting, 
you will become eswl so first dust uh, and at the end uh, when the stone is wobbling you make pieces and then go to the thulium thulium is very good for what this is homium only this is homium only now it has become pieces now you go to thulium always in children take one piece for metabolic analysis one piece not many pieces time waste so you now you see the small pieces are there if you leave it like that they will grow now this is the thulium in half minute or one minute uh, completely it will become powder completely it will become powder so you 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 need not worry uh, uh, if it is in the center if it is in the ureter you can worry see complete powder the advantage of thulium is fine pow fine powder in the last advantage of homium is uh, fine powder in the beginning so this is a four months baby as the experience increases you don't leave this baby presented with anuria everybody asks why four months baby bilateral rirs anuria creatinine raised two stones in the ureter four stones in the kidney four stones in the left kidney four in the right male patient so four months yes if the ureter is accommodable only we will put it otherwise why will you put it if the ureter is accommodable only see guide wire is going with difficulty you pass you have to do some maneuvers like like this stretching maneuver and then you have gone inside and then once you are inside don't use any access sheet because four months will not admit any access sheet now i am going inside now the access sheet the, see see it is not going this is a small kid so what will you do you put a ureteroscope rigid stay for 5 minutes listen a good song then it gives a passive dilatation then try once again if it is not going stop it there is no point go for eswl pcnl micro perk mini perk etc but it has gone once it has gone flex x c why flex x c here the difference between flex x c and flex x 2 e is any this is only one french i thought i will pass that it has gone easily and it's academic case when you have academic case you are like tanuj pal but i told it is a beautiful vision so these are the small stones which are the stent passing is also difficult 3 3.5 french 16 cm once it is over i have tried on the other side other side stent removed other side two guide wires passed then other side uh, actually this is a bigger stone in the upper ureter it was not going so there is difficult maneuver see the maneuvers during that time you can lose the scope so once you get some experience then only you do it now it is inside once it is inside be careful water should come out and this is a stone one in the calyx deep calyx another was in and one more calyx which is coming out going out so i kept high frequency it came out then see this is a stone and ultimately the baby uh, did well in the post operative period we, two days we have kept uh, with intensive care we 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 uh, taken care of this baby see some amount of nephrogram is seen so you have to push the dj stent these are the small parts see how much dj stent is inside this is a post operative ct film some controversy why you have done ct it is low dose ct only and the child did very well this is published in last month in uh, elsewhere articles pediatrics this is the smallest baby in the world to undergo bilateral rirs now this is a deep inferior calicial stone six uh, uh, years girl solitary kidney uh, uh, anterior diverticular stone very deep like this deep inferior calyx what will you do you can do pcnl you can do rirs you attempt one time rirs i went inside this was in a kolkata live conference now i have gone inside i am see i made a small uh, mucosal uh, uh, breach then the stone is seen whenever see how much awkward movements are there here so during this awkward movement scope can break so don't attempt initially the trick here is don't try to make powder let just now i told that powder 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 here no powder no powder pieces 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 and take out the pieces once the pieces are out you can do whatever you want that is a this thing now this is kyphoscoliosis calcium oxalate uh, uh, see how this is there are people who died in pcnl in kyphoscoliosis on right side because ivc will come this is calcium oxalate small stone even eswl is very difficult you just put one laser fiber 5 minutes this is a unedited video not even 5 minutes finished so post tented only one anesthesia short ga that too fentanyl plus uh, uh, propofol just 2 minutes and then the discharge within 6 hours so you should not just say that one anesthesia two anesthesia three four four times don't charge the patient why you want to charge four times then it is becomes 
easy. Now coming to the isolated renal anomaly, Sarshu kidney, it is like this, small child male baby, very difficult case. So when, when once you get experience, you, you go inside, this is post-entered, see how difficult this RGP for PCNL, no calyx is properly anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, everything is like a cluster. So you have to go with uh, difficulty inside and then the P see the small penis and once you go inside stone is there, then you powder. Once you see the stone, it is everything is okay. Now I kept the access sheath because initial water flow was not good. After that I did it. But after completing half, then I went inside with uh, uh, the digital scope and one small stone like this was left behind and completely cleared. You, sh you should not do CT in all cases. Ultrasound is very sensitive. Children, we should not give radiation. See, post-operative film, no stone, no intravasation, no extravasation, no isthmic damage, same scope, same PCS. Now this is the baby. Now pediatric storage scope has come, which is short length, but no difference in the diameter. What is the advantage? You need not work out like laparoscopy working a kilometer away. You will be nearer to the external genitalia. You see, this is the smallest scope. Otherwise, diameter, look, everything is same. Only thing is that long length will not be there outside the small penis. So that you can operate close to the body. Then you will be happy. You have to be with open mind. This is my last slide and video. I was doing RIRS enthusiastically in this. Suddenly RGP, I have done. It caused intravasation. So don't do. You should be well versed with the. This is a, after going to Trichy, after watching one day 12 surgeries of supine PCNL by Govind Rajan, uh, this Karthikeyan and Vikram, everybody, even Arun sir from uh, Chennai, I was impressed. Since then I am doing only supine PCNL. This is the smallest child I kept in supine position because child difficult, nine months. I did supine PCNL. Why? Because I am telling you should be very good in PCNL also. Don't say that I will never do PCNL. I don't know PCNL. Both are wrong. See, this small child, we went inside. Uh, ureter was tight after this digestant removal. So I thought it is not a good case. Whenever ureter is like this, don't do it. Now what will you do? You put a ureteric catheter, do RGP. What we have done? RGP. With only 5 ml, intravasation has happened. 5 ml, not even 5 ml. See here, this is the last C. Immediately, immediately such a contrast. You will be unhappy. Either you put a stent and come out or you do something else. So I thought, why not supine PCNL, nine months baby, then I punctured, this is the position. Here I am not going to talk about the supine PCNL, but in a pediatrics, uh, ESWL is very good, but majority of the patients, you cannot put uh, the uh, bulb to the patient body easily. You have to separately buy it. Already it is 540 lakhs, 50 lakhs, one crore. For child again, yearly one case will come. How will you buy? So it is not practical. So see, this is a puncture. Once you puncture, everything is same. In children, kidney moves like anything. Almost it is going to the opposite side over the spine. So what we did, we one person has kept a hand. Everything learned in conferences only. So key, all the juniors keep going to good surgeons' conferences and keep learning. I have learned this only three months back. Because of my expertise previously in PCNL, I could do this. Now you go inside, uh, dilate, coral starch, micro perk, uh, mini perk access directly went inside like this and once you are inside the stone is nicely seen it is small stone small or big you have to remove it patient has come for stone only you take for five minutes after that no stitch nothing just come out no feeding tube uh, no stent and ureteric has nothing great to say no stent no feeding tube a patient should not get fever that is more important so but because surgery when see upper calyx is so nicely seen and then upper compound calyx uh, last two last one minute. Don't worry. Uh, today anyway, it is six uh, six uh, fifteen. Now this is another calyx, and this is the small. Uh, if you see here, uh, this is the tube, and the nephrostogram should be clear, and the baby is doing very well. See now we we kept uh, ureter catheter uh, and uh, feeding tube, nothing else. After that, child uh, postoperatively did very well. Post op day one only we could discharge but we discharged on post-op day two. This is the picture on the post-op day one. This is post-op day one with mother and myself. So be careful, select appropriately comparable SFR to PCNL, less hospital say, less radiation, no major complication.
I told no major complication immediately. Mahesh Deshpande sir told, don't say like that. There are major complications like sepsis and urethral stricture. I agree that I will change the slide in future. That's why I change it like this. Conclusion requires technical skill. May require multiple session, longer operative time. Need for pre stenting. Then this slide is added after I was scolded by Mahesh Deshpande sir. So you have to choose carefully in difficult cases. Without the teamwork, you cannot uh, do. Uh, fortunately, I have two uh, total seven. Two from uh, uh, Chennai, uh, Dr. Hemnath and Dr. Uh, uh, Soundarya, and the rest of the team are very senior. Sir Swami, Ramakrishna, Manas, um, Rakesh, and Arjun. Uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That was a wonderful presentation. It's like uh, M. S. Dhoni coming in the slag over sitting a century. And I, I think most of the participants won't mind to take a few questions. So yes, yes, we are. Yeah. So we'll go ahead with the question and answer session. So Dr. yes, yes. Doctor Vikram's mic is on mute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want to Apostle. ask if someone is going to start a RIRS, which is the recommended scope? What oh, scope okay. is it by? I have to answer. No? Okay. Oh, you. You want me to answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tamish. Go ahead. So uh, you know that is a very difficult question. As such, what we usually advise is you have, you should have one fiber optic scope, okay, and uh, one digital scope which can be a disposable or a reusable one according to your choice. But you sh one should have two scopes in your department at all the time. That's what I feel because you know in a RIRS uh, suddenly you know after maybe even if you are an expert. It, You know, even if your scope lasts hundred cases, mm -hmm. but sometimes in even in your tenth case, the scope can get uh, damaged. The fibers can get damaged. So you should have a standby scope at all the time. If you have a digital and a fiber optic, with digital you have the advantage of excellent vision, and with fiber optic you have the advantage of uh, very good maneuverability and Sit. you know ease to pass in almost every case. Uh, it's on. Man, so that's why you, you should have two. Scopes, one can have one fiber optic and one this one. Okay. All the scopes that I mentioned, especially the uh, reusable digital and the fiber optic scopes, are excellent scopes. The ones okay. that are available now, it's it's like the hall of fame of uh, uh, RIRS scopes. So one can choose any of those. They're all very good. Oh, thank you. That was what uh, Dr. Ibba Shergesar wants to know, and uh, Dr. Ari Alaudin Maududi. He wants to know: Is it always necessary to pre-stent the patient? Chandra Babu sir, can you take the question? A question is pre-stented. Do you always pre-stent the patient? Uh, not necessary. If you pass six by seven point five ureteroscope, if it goes easily, you don't need stent. You can use access sheet also. Six by seven point five ureteroscope, if it goes easily. How many cases it goes? Seventy percent easily. Twenty percent not easily. Not easily stent. No active dilatation. Ten percent of the cases, you will think I can go. I can go. Go. But stay with ureteroscope for five minutes so that it gets dilated. Don't go directly with access sheet. Second point: in those ten percent where it is tight, use a new access sheet. It goes nicely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think you have answered one more question in that uh, thing. Like when you are not able to pass the access sheet beyond the VUG, what will be your strategy? So is it always you stand? This was I want to ask, but you already said if you are not going to. Stand. If you are not able to pass the access sheet, you will stand in case uh, of. Ah uh, no no. There is one point. If you can engage the access sheet just one centimeter, just one centimeter, rest of the ureter is okay. Even then, it is for the assistant very difficult to hold. One time you can go. Eight mm is there. Finish. Come out again. If you come out, then you will do two three times like this. Then it will become sedimentous. You can one centimeter access sheet. But it cannot be stabilized by the assistant. It will come out into the bladder. Water will not come that easily. If it is rest of the ureter is tight, it will go into high pressure. So you your judgment initial 550 cases don't do unnecessarily enki enki at the lower UVJ. It will form stricture. Do properly stenting nicely. Tell the patient and do it. Once the experience comes, I need not tell like any other ureteroscopy. Uh, minute, sir. Yes, please. Uh, do, do you always counsel your RIR patient for two CT like this when you are not able to pass the access sheet? What will you do? And do you always counsel the patient for multiple CTs before RIR? 
I think the the answer to that question is better answered if you look at the anatomy before, look at the patient's body habitus, and and also the fact that whether he was pre-stented or not pre-stented, because a stenting itself is one procedure. I never promise a patient that I can do an RIRS in the first sitting, even if he's stented. Even if they've been stented somewhere, when they come to me, I tell them, we are only going to decide on table. So I actually, most of them now, I counsel them for ECRS because they want something to get them stone free that sitting. But for, for anybody who's starting out, if you tell your patient that you can do the surgery in the first sitting, I think you probably are giving them the wrong impression. Further, it's not about accessing the stone in the first sitting. You may be able to access it. You may still not be able to completely render it stone free because that's where the stone composition, the stone position and everything else matters. But having said that, we have done a study. If you, if you cross 500 cases, your stone free rate in the first sitting goes up very high, almost 95%. You get much more confidence. It's only after I finished my 800 and 850 cases that I'm now more confident of telling them in the first uh, visit in the OPD how much of a success rate I can promise. Uh, thank you, Vinitsar. Thank you, Vinitsar. I think it will be under this approach. Thank you, Vinitsar. I think that the message is well clear. Before RARS, always ensure the patient is ready for multiple surgeries. There is a question from Dr. Kathamuthu. How to avoid or reduce snowstorm effect during fragmentation of calculus? Dr. Deepak, sir, can you take it? Yeah, no, I guess you, majority of the times you see the snowstorm effect, uh, provided the stone volume is on the larger side. And as you keep doing it, halfway down the lane, or the three-fourths of the stone is done, you see a lot of dust flying. And that's what you call a stone snowstorm effect. But majority of the times, if you keep close to the stone as much as possible, stay close to the stone, don't bother moving here and there, and uh, corner the stone into a calyx at the end of a calyx, and keep the distance between the stone and the scope to the minimal, majority of the times you'll be able to avoid it. But another trick of the trade is to use a bit of a contrast uh, into the PCS where uh, it will tend to settle down. Either a bleed or even uh, a lot of snowstorm effect can be settled if you use a bit of a contrast injected into the PCS. So these are the couple of tricks. Thank you. I think there is a question from Dr. Bargav Nandia. What is the approximate cost of uh, new disposable digital scores? I can I, I myself will answer. It will be around 80,000 to 1 lakh. Depending upon your negotiating capacity. Uh, but, but the cost of uh, the screen is extra. Yeah, that, that, the monitor, that, yeah. Exactly. That is, it, it is significant. Yeah, exactly. So that is an uh, answer which is not given by the trade people uh, the first instance. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Sambat Kumar wants to know if the patient is on DJ stand. I think you have already answered. Culture will be positive even then we have to take under cover, uh, under antibiotic cover. Uh, this was answered in the chat session itself. Uh, can anyone suggest which is more cost effective, digital flexible or the disposable flexible? Uh, Tanaj, you will be the right person, I think. Uh, again, what I would recommend in today's setting is that if you're planning to make a practice of RIR out of RIRs, that you're going to do a lot of RIRs, it is better to have one of uh, fiber optic and uh, uh, one of the uh, digital ones. Uh, definitely, major issue with the digital scope is the cost of repair. If it get with the reusable, if it gets damaged, the cost of repair can uh, be equal to a cost of a new fiber optic scope. So it is very, you know. So now, you know, we are evolving. Like for example, we are trying to negotiate with the company to get a CMC of a digital scope. That's how we are comparing now. If they gave us a CMC, we'll go for the reusable one. Otherwise, we'll go for the disposable one. Oh, right. And, Karthik, Karthik. Yes, sir. Uh, one small point I wanted. If you have a trainees under you, like we have fellowship, if they break 5 lakh scope versus 70 lakhs, 70,000, it makes a lot of difference. So if you have trainees, you are on a regular training basis, a digital scope, the disposable scope is very useful. Now I am finding it useful, to be honest. Oh, nice. Uh, sir, yeah. Another point, Karthik, uh, Karthik, is that if you are going to use for tumors, you have to have a digital scope. Uh, yeah, and yeah. For that, and that's only a reusable scope. The okay. hidden cost of a reusable scope, if you are doing more than 80 to 90 cases in your center within a month, is quite high. 
the hidden cost when I say sterilization, maintenance, etc. I I would prefer to then use a disposable soap. Yes, that's a very valid point. And having said about sterilization, what is the way you sterilize your scope in between cases? Yeah, the the generator. Uh, I see. We 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 use uh, we have a teaching institute, and then we also have a high volume, so we use mainly disposable. For sterilization, for us, I think Cytex is still uh, the most common one. Otherwise, like Vikram said, if I use the scope, I still make it a point to do exactly what Vikram did. I do it myself, and then I send it for uh, you know sterilization to the central location. Uh, general, then do the scope yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chandramohan sir, since your uh, case turnover is going to be very fast every day, how do you sterilize? Do you use multiple scopes for each case? Uh, I, 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 I have a multiple scopes and now I have taken steroid large one, NX. So after that significant reduction, otherwise previously I used to use uh, parasitic acid, that is Paracef. Uh, that is okay if you do two or three cases. If it's a single scope, if you do third case, even if you put in Paracef for adequate time, I find that uh, infections will go. So if you are a beginner, daily one one case you do or two cases you do, so that in between they sterilize properly. First you first case you do, and then a fifth case you do. Don't do continuously two RIRs with the same scope or three with the same scope. I have steroid now, large one. Kartik, I just want to uh, make a valid point here when you asked about the urine culture with what uh, Chandra just said. It's now medical legally if you use in a positive culture. A reusable scope, you can be sued because the literature says use a disposable scope. So just keep that yes. in mind, depending on your patient. Just keep that in mind. Very, Very good point. That's a valid point. And uh, uh, how to reduce urosepsis during RERS? One of the most dreaded complications of RERS is urosepsis. How to reduce, how to keep your intraurinal pressure low. And uh, Deepak, sir, what's your uh, take? Yeah. About the urosepsis? And the urosepsis and how to keep the intraurinal. Yeah, so that's what, like, like I've just uh, highlighted in the presentation and uh, aptly raised uh, by one of the uh, participants about the urine culture aspect. So primarily, clinically, you don't want the patient to be uh, 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 sick with uh, features of pyelonephritis or of course sepsis, which is straight away no. But uh, to keep your urosepsis down, ideally, if there are any signs of infection, recording appropriate antibiotics for some time. Maybe stand them for a few. Stop I pen, stop, stop, just, I pen, maximum size. And the presenting would also okay, help you to admit in a, a larger solid. access, uh, thereby keeping your intraurinal pressure on the lowest side. And uh, choose your cases uh, carefully as far as the stone volume is concerned, so that the, your operating time also goes down. So primarily, uh, take care of the urine culture. Use an adequate urinary, I mean, uh, access sheet to keep the pressure low. Uh, keep the intraurinal pressure also low by uh, keeping an eye on your uh, the irrigation system, what you do, don't pressure in too much and uh, uh, keep the operating time as minimal as possible. These are the few things to consider to keep uh, the sepsis down. I, I think uh, Vinit sir is fond of tracks sir. Um, what do you use for the uh, irrigation? Oh, I, I strictly follow, I just use a Traxia pump. It has uh, three advantages. One is there's a bit of uh, warming of the saline. The second thing is it's a very controlled pressure. It only raises the intraurinal pressure 15 millimeters every time you use the hand pump, and that's acceptable. The third thing is the pressure is uh, gauged, so it goes from 80 to 90 to 100 in a very uh, defined way. Unlike when you use, a, I mean, somebody may be strong, they can pump faster. Somebody is not such a strong person or not so experienced, and the way you pr use your syringe or the way you use your hand pump at times can very easily cause a, a calicial perforation and that's why a traxia pump, I feel, is really good. But again, uh, foot pumps is the only thing which I would not advise to use. A hand pump can be used carefully, no matter what you have. And uh, I think uh, in Trichy, we have a different uh, method of uh, irrigation. Uh, I call upon uh, Dr. Vikram to explain the way how we use the irrigation. Yeah, can you hear me? We can see you and hear. Yeah, you. yeah. Uh, actually, what we do is uh, we use a gravity irrigation basically, but most of the time we uh, keep the irrigation closed. We give one shot of injection Lasix when we start to break the stone and keep the outlet of the scope open. This mainly works when we use a semi-rigid scope, 
to break larger renal pelvic stones and uh, we hardly end up using 500 ml of irrigation for uh, one full stone even 2 cm stones uh, we open the irrigation only when it is absolutely mandatory once we give lasix the urine produced continuously gives a washing of the dust and that comes out through the channel itself so that way we are uh, we are coming out with a paper on that uh, that way we are able to uh, keep the irrigation very low i think kartik the point is you actually use your irrigation to only when you fire the laser you don't need irrigation else otherwise exactly. because the heat that's generated is what you want the temperature to be low so vikram is actually partly right It'd be a nice paper actually vikram if you come out with it Uh, having said about the heat generation, I just have to ask this question: Do you feel using laser in ureter is unsafe? If it's so, how to prevent the laser-induced complications in ureter? Can I answer that? Yes, sir. I, I, I just find because if you don't use a laser in the ureter and you use a pneumatic instrument today, you will cause more damage. Use a laser, but there are certain precautions you need to take, and the first important thing is. your energy do not exceed beyond 1 joule in the in the ureter number 2 if the stone is impacted try not to be heroic try to dust gently slowly don't you can't be fast if you can't fragment the stone even if it means coming back another day so that's some another point to take always go from the like i said if you go from go from the center to the periphery not from the periphery to the center we uh, we will be putting up the paper too we drill a hole through when you drill a hole through it does three things the irrigation flows through the water is flowing in and out uh, there had there was a japanese paper which showed and also further then it came by from a netherlands paper that the microscopic dissection that the water causes to cause micro abscesses is completely absent when you have flow across the stone or beyond the stone so drill a hole through let the water go through and then reduce the flow rate bring it down to a measurable level which is not too fast and then gently carry on with the stone so use a laser don't use anything else so you you we have to use laser very cautiously in ureter and that doesn't forbid us to use laser from uh, in ureter is that right yeah i i think use it caution here and these are the uh, precautions i i excuse me i go ahead sir uh, uh, vinith hi, uh, hi so uh, i strongly uh, believe that making a hole in the center through and through more than 1.5 cm stone is not easy coring through is not easy you will touch here and there mucosa especially if it is a 200 micron fiber it wobbles i feel if the outflow is there like for example ureteric sheet access sheet with ureteroscope small ureteroscope then whatever the water that comes out fine you do it otherwise you I use pneumatic lithotripter uh, first if pneumatic lithotripter is not working if it is stone is going up let it go after that you do proper rirs this is uh, my I, opinion yeah, yeah if if you are counseling for an rirs and then i would rather push the stone to the kidney completely agree with you yeah yeah and, uh, yeah, yeah. and for a big stone uh, don't try anything heroic also agree with you my i thought this was just using your ureteroscope normal ureteroscope and a laser if you counsel so it, almost any stone which is above the iliac crest today i tell the patient you will have to pay for RIRS. flexible ureteroscopy rirs rirs yeah that is the bottom line yeah very good very good point very valid point sir and a few more questions and then we'll finish it up fast and uh, what is the strategy to negotiate the upper ureteric kinks during flexible ureteroscopy uh, tanuj i think you can take this tanuj yeah Uh, there are a couple of ways and it's more majorly just like we do in our uh, you know uh, hemorrhage ureteroscopy you can try passing two guide wires you can take the ureteroscope there and pass a guide wire you can use a rigid guide wire uh, after once your guide wire has gone you can pass a ureteric catheter and then you can pass a, a rigid guide wire uh i have seen some experts including dr traxer only last month Uh, you know actually managed to use a flexible ureteroscope to negotiate that kink and go into the pelvis but you know uh, that's only for uh, you know very high level experts i would say because when we have tried to do that we have ended up uh, you know perforating or causing more damage and then there are those maneuvers of lifting the kidney and uh, all of us know uh, and last few questions and uh, what is the level of access sheet what is the level at which access sheet to be kept 
and uh, I think if you need to keep at the upper editor, may not go up to the pelvis. Uh, if it doesn't go, at least whatever whatever level it goes, just beyond the VJs, you know. I think uh, most uh, panelists will agree. Yeah, but one difficulty, and I had the difficulty in a case today itself. I'll tell you that if the sheath is just lit into the lower ureter, and this was a 35 centimeter sheath, I mean, in a male patient, uh, problem was that uh, the scope was just at the entry point of the sheath. So your left hand movements become very much restricted. So better to take out the sheet and go sheetless or use a thinner sheet. Exactly. Uh, valid point. And, uh, can, I, can I add? Yes, sir. Point, Kartikin? Yes, sir. The uh, point is valid. The, you know, if you take theory, the paper which came out from Amsterdam showed you keep your access sheet one centimeter below the PUJ. The flow rate is better. Maneuverability of the instruments is better because if you push it too much inside, you actually are closing the PUJ. And the water flow is not that good. Secondly, yeah. your ability, like Vikram showed you, that movement of your hand in and out is okay, but moving the scope, deflecting it up and down, is very, very restricted. And you will never be able to get to the lower pole. So I would prefer to have the access sheet a centimeter or two below the PUJ, and the drainage is better as well. And the maneuverability, you get full movements of your scope. And in pediatrics, I think, Chandra, it, it's, it's really important where you yeah. place your access yeah, sheet. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I strongly agree. Access sheet insertion is uh, more important is ureter distensibility and water coming out. If you keep little low, I keep in the lower end as a matter of fact, water anyway will come down. If the ureter is very snugly fitting with scope, uh, it won't come. So if the access sheath is two centimeter below, it is always better. hundred uh, percent, you should not be closer to the pelvis. Your movements will be decreased. Uh, very point, sir. And uh, I just want to ask Dr. Vikram, what is the tips to do RARS under uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, we have been doing uh, RIRS under spinal anesthesia uh, from the beginning, right from the beginning. The first 50 cases, we were doing it under general anesthesia. After that, it has been only spinal anesthesia. Uh, the level is little above uh, than what the anesthetist regularly gives uh, for a ureteroscope. Uh, we have done all the stones, uh, pelvic stones, upper calicial stones, ECIRS and spinal anesthesia. We have not had problems. There was no stage where we had to convert from spinal to general anesthesia for want of more time. Uh, it gives us adequate time to uh, finish a case and uh, it is cost effective. I think Chandra Mohan sir would uh, agree with me. We had demonstrated it in our uh, workshop also. Yeah, yeah. I agree. But uh, uh, a small uh, this thing, uh, if you wanted to do uh, in children or if you wanted to demonstrate powder till the end uh, faster, uh, sometimes large stone and children GA is better. Uh, uh, anesthetist uh, and patient cooperation is little bit required. If you are using high energy, sometimes high energy if touches in pandiblum, it may bleed. Otherwise, I agree. Now, for poor patients, when I am doing at low cost, I am doing under spinal. In India, the, you should never say that I can never do under spinal. It is very much possible. I, Vikram, you know that you, uh, Vikram made that point during his uh, live presentation in Trichy that he actually turns the monitor to the patient and asks the patient to hold his respiration. I use that now, uh, two or three cases recently, and I find that patients are very cooperative. They actually quite enjoy watching that. So that was a good trick that you taught me that. But some people misunderstand and take yeah. deep breathing. <laughs> then your fiber will go into. <laughs> the no, North true. Indian patient, suddenly they'll wake up from the slumber and they'll start breathing more rapidly. More. <laughs> they'll breathe yeah. more. When you say stop, yeah. they'll breathe yeah. more. Then so if you shout, that doesn't look nice. Uh, now exactly. COVID time is changing us, but even for apoiotic stones, I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, COVID time, Vikram, I must tell COVID time, spinal anesthesia is yeah, 100 no. times safer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will finish with the one last final question. Sir. What is the minimum time we require before the taking for RARS after free stenting? There's no debate, it's two weeks. Two weeks. That's two that's weeks. That's good enough. No debate. Okay. Okay. 12 days. Uh, you can, you, if you're giving tansolosin, they actually tell you one week is also enough. Okay. But if you fail again, third attempt, it will be. Patient will never come back to you. <laughs> uh, that, that was an excellent uh, uh, team performance, excellent discussion. Uh, all good things have to come to an end. 
I thank all the wonderful participants for the spending so much of their time. And, uh, I thank all the participants, the 91 participants who stayed with us until the end. Thank you, everyone. Thank we, you. We thank you, Gadi, again for coordinating the whole event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.